want you to think of now who was it? Was it was it you, Eduardo? I think when I um, asked you to line up and I said, okay, I want you to be the same distance from the fence of the basketball courts and a single person, which I think it was Anurata. Okay, so here we go. Here's our fence, right? There's a line. Here it is, okay? And here is a point, the position of a person. Okay. Now what we're now after is, what's the equation of the locus that is equidistant from these two features? Okay, so there's some point, P. And this is what we looked at before. It has coordinates x, y because wh why? Why do I call the coordinates x, y? Because they don't have any value yet. Well, yeah, that's right. We don't know what they are, and they can move. They're variable, as I heard someone say, right? They can shift around. So these values, they could be different things, but they can't be just anything, right? They obey certain properties. We've seen uh, circles. We've seen a perpendicular bisector. Uh, a couple of perpendicular bisectors. And what shape will we get from this? You may remember the shape that we started to trace out out of the basketball courts, but how can we show it algebraically? Okay. So, to begin with, we're going to um, put some names on these. We've already got this thing being named. This line, I'm going to call it line D for reasons that will become clear enough soon. So if I want the distance from P to the line to be the same as the distance from P to the point, what should be like the first line that I write that demonstrates that relationship? Yeah, okay. So you do like square root of X. Okay, even before I write what the distance da 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 the square root is, what is that square root? Like where did that come oh, from? Okay. Yeah, do you? Well, I can look at like SP. Yeah, yeah, that's what I probably write. Which, by the way, uh, you're talking about the kid, you started with the square root of da 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 da, that's the distance between those two points, right? And then I want that to be equal to the distance between the point and the line, right? Which I suppose I could call this, Wait, right? Are we proving that S D equals P? S D. Because we need to show the point no, that's moving. No, 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 no. This is the point that's moving. This is the point that's moving, right? And I want the relationship, the distance between these two to be the same as the distance between uh, these two. Okay. So that's PS and PD, right? By the way, just as a sort of signal to you, when you're converting all of that wordy stuff into an equation, right? Because P is the point that has the relationship that's equal, right? P needs to appear on both sides of the equation. Does that make sense? Okay. So now that I know what I'm equating, I want to actually have some expressions for these things, right? So PS, that's a pair of points. I know how to do the distance here, and off goes the key is square root. What am I going to have underneath the square root? <laughs> I've got yeah, x minus 4, all square. Good. Yep, you're matching up those coordinates. Fantastic. Okay, there's my distance formula. No big deal. When I get to the right-hand side, I'm doing the distance between a point and a line, which of course is a perpendicular distance, right? So to do the perpendicular distance formula, I can't quite work with this, can I? I actually need to modify this just a teeny little bit. How should I rewrite that equation? So all I've done there, in a somewhat redundant form, is I've written this in general form, right? I've written the zero there to indicate there is an A, it just happens to be zero. I've written the one in because there happens to be a B, and that's its value, right? And there's the constant once you get it in the right spot, okay? So if that's AX plus BY plus C, and this is the point that I'm comparing it to, right? What is this um, perpendicular distance form? It's been a little while. Who wants to start me off? Yeah. Absolute value of Y plus 3. Okay. Well, I'm actually going to write yeah, the, whole thing, the whole thing, yeah? Because what I have on the top here is, AX1 plus BY1 plus C. It just so happens that in this case, the X1 and Y1 are X and Y. That's the point I'm comparing to, right? So those are the coordinates. <coughs> there they are right there, X1 and Y1. They just happen to be, in this case, X and Y. Right? That's on the numerator. On the bottom, I have, do you remember? It's going to be, yeah, Pythagoras, just like this, right? So it's the square root of A squared plus B squared, which is squared plus b squared. Are you happy with that? 
All right, now before we uh, do anything to this, right, you can see I'm going to have something nice and neat on the denominator. Great, it's going to vanish away. Okay. I have a square root over here. And then I have an absolute value over here. And we're expecting that these two are going to need to talk to each other. Now, in the past, we had like a square root on both sides. What did we do when you saw that? We, we squared both sides. And that was OK because we had square roots on both sides. They were both positive. We weren't adding any more solutions or anything like that. It's the same deal here. This has to be positive, square root. This has to be positive, because it's an absolute value. So I'm going to square the whole lot. Okay? That gets rid of the square root sign on this side. And over here, as uh, Raph pointed out, this is really just y plus 3. That's, that's really all it is. Once I square it, I don't need to worry about the absolute value anymore, because a square is also positive. So I have this. Okay, now again, before we just go mindlessly into crunching the algebra, even though we will do that, right? What are you expecting will happen? You notice before you expand these, you can see you'll get a y squared here, and you'll have a y squared here. J just one of them, exactly, right? Since you've got exactly one of both sides, then they both should cancel each other out. Does that make sense? Okay. So you're going to have some y terms, some x squared and x terms. What are you starting to anticipate? Just so when you get there, like, okay, this is what I was expecting. Let's expand and see what happens. So can we do um, a squared minus b squared? Uh, you mean you just here and here? Yeah, 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 we absolutely could. I'm going to go ahead and expand this, and then we'll do that. Okay. Um, good morning. This is 8x plus 16. Okay. Now, if I bring this over here, as was suggested, you don't have to do this, by the way, but we can. Uh, I've got y plus 3 squared. Squared. Okay, so this wasn't my originally intended path, but I have no problem with it. This is different to squares here, right? So the ex factorization of difference of squares is a minus b. A minus b. Now, okay, what happens when I do a minus b? The y's will cancel, won't they? So you get six. And then I'll get 3 minus negative 3, which is 6. Okay? When I do a plus b, it won't be the y's that cancel, it will be the threes that cancel. Do you see that? That's okay. So this will become 2y. That's just my a minus b, and that's my a plus b. You okay with that? By the way, you didn't have to do that. If these numbers didn't match up, you wouldn't gain a huge amount out of it, but it works just fine. Okay. All right, now. I'm almost there, aren't I? Right? I could, um, I could write this as 12y if I like. This, in fact, I don't really, I didn't really need to have um, expanded this, right? I haven't gained very much out of expanding it. I haven't gained any um, insight. These terms over here have all sort of cancelled with each other. So it's not like I have a constant over here that's also mixed with this. Okay? We didn't know that in advance, so we just expanded. No problem. Okay? I'm going to tidy things up. I have 12y here. I'm going to pop this back in its factorized form because factorizing is usually useful to us. Right? And then I'm going to make y the subject. OK, what can you tell me about this? Firstly, what kind of a shape is it? It's clearly a parabola, right? It's in a, a normal y equals da 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 form. Okay. By the way, what, what form is this? What does this tell you? With, with parabolas, you basically have, you've only got three options, right? It's either general, ax squared plus bx plus c, that's one form. Doesn't look like that, does it? You have a completely factorized form, and then you have vertex form, okay? That just so happens in this particular case that those last two are the same. This is as factorized as it can get, right? But it also is, like, have a look over here. This is y minus zero, right? So I've got my x coordinate on my vertex there, and my y coordinate on my vertex there. Does that make sense? What difference does that make? That, that has to do with like steepness or fatness, that kind of thing. <coughs> let's draw this guy. Let's draw him. And let's include these pieces that we were talking about before. Draw yourself up a set axis.
16 over Eight. 12. Oh, 112. <laughs> 16 over 12 will be four thirds. Four thirds? So if that's four thirds, then four comma three is going to be around here. Ish. <coughs> Oh, sorry. I see what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> I ran out of space. Okay, we have the general idea. Let's have a look. Scale's not the greatest, but we have the general picture here, right? There's that parabola. There's my vertex, which I got out of vertex form. Okay. There's this point up here. Now, this line I have drawn, um, this line here, uh, I've drawn it dotted. It's not an asymptote, okay? Which is, you start to run out of different ways to draw lines. It's like, oh, should I do it in like Morse code or something? Okay. <laughs> But this line here, it clearly tells us something important about this, right? I want you to remember what happened when you were all standing um, against the um, fence, and there's an around in the middle, right? So for example, I pick a point like say there. Right? Pick a point like there. Now, how does that point satisfy this kind of property that we were given, right? Well, the distance between P, there's one example of P, right? And that fixed point that was um, provided okay, is the same as the distance from my point P and this line over here. And don't forget, it's perpendicular. Okay? So I've got this being equal to this. Okay? So what have we created? What have we created? This particular locus, when you are equidistant from a point and a line, this is the locus of a parabola. We recognize this shape. You saw it as soon as you saw this equation come out. Even by this point down here, you could start to guess. Okay, my y squareds would cancel. I recognize this equation. Okay. So more generally speaking, the locus of all points that are equidistant from a given point and a line is a parabola.